Previously, we have seen that a circular economy uses much less energy and causes less emissions and less, to, less waste. And this is um, a very good reason to go towards a circular e economy. We've also explored our urban mines, the stocks of metals in society that are the sources of new materials of a circular economy. Now we're going to have a look into stock dynamics, the mineability of the urban mine. And we draw conclusions from that regarding the time involved in reaching a circular economy. We'll use aluminium as an example. A circular economy, that is an economy where all material comes, or most material comes, from secondary production. Secondary production is the production of materials from scrap and from waste. So that means the, economi the economy has to be in an equilibrium, a steady state. It's an economy where the stocks do not grow anymore and where the flows are only there to maintain that stock at a certain size. That means that the outflow of waste out of the stock equals the inflow of new material. And that the outflow actually, in fact, is the new inflow. We do not have to use primary materials anymore. Well, how is that for aluminium? The picture shows the production of primary aluminium during the 20th century, up to about now. And, well, you see various things in this graph. In the first place, you see that before the Second World War, aluminium was really a small-scale material, but it has grown enormously since then. You could also see a little bit of um, slackening in the growth during the 70s, and this is due to the, the, well, the stabilization of the stock in the OECD countries. After that, with um, the emerging economies coming up, you see that it grows again, um, and it grows really very fast. The first thing that we need is that the demand will stop growing. And this will happen if the world population no longer grows and if the demand per person no longer grows. The world population, well, at present is growing uh, very rapidly, but in all kinds of scenarios for the future, you see that they sort of account for the world population to stop growing at a certain moment in time. The other thing is that the demand per person no longer grows. And we have seen that in the graph here, that um, in the OECD countries this more or less already has happened. So you see that, that well, when people get rich enough, then at a certain moment the demand per person no longer grows. And the next thing that we need, of course, is that we have to cover this stabilized demand by secondary production. And this happens when we boost the recycling rates really close to 100% and at the moment that the stock is saturated. Because when the stock is saturated, then at that moment the inflow equals the outflow.